Hey there, friends, and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to discuss everything about the roadmap creation. Generally, the process of creating a roadmap is owned by a product manager or a product owner working with a team. But the engineering manager plays a very important role in supporting this process and ensuring the end result is achievable, well-researched, as well as having the team and relevant stakeholders happy and excited about. In my experience, there are many questions that need answering, and different people are interested in different questions. Without a good framework in place, it can be a lot to handle. Which project should we work on first? How long is each project going to take? How are we going to balance feature and maintenance work? And so many others. In response to these questions, I have done a lot of research and have identified certain frameworks and best practices that I use when I work with my teams to create a roadmap. Today, I'm excited to share with you all my knowledge and experiences. I have also prepared some documents for you to download and use for free to help you in the process, so stay tuned to see how to best take advantage of them. If you enjoy that type of content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. With all that said, let's get started and explore how to best create effective roadmaps. To start with, I want to be very clear about the key elements a roadmap should include and what needs to be ignored at this stage. This is an area I have seen many people get wrong and be way too detailed or incredibly abstract. We need to find a good balance here. A roadmap should include five main ingredients. The projects we're going to work on, what are their goals, a timeline for each of them, dependencies that we have between the projects, and resource allocation. Who's going to work on which project? That's all we need. Nothing more, nothing less. A roadmap should not include the following. It shouldn't include detailed implementation plans. Roadmaps provide a high-level overview and strategic direction rather than detailed implementation plans. Specific technical details? No. Roadmaps focus on the business aspects of the initiatives rather than getting into technical details or specific coding solutions. Exact dates and deadlines? That's a bit of a, of a tricky one. While well, roadmaps include a timeline, they typically provide broader timeframes like quarters or months, rather than specific dates and deadlines. These have no place in the roadmap document. That is, if we want to be efficient with it and as effective as possible. Now that we understand what type of information the roadmap should include, we need to think about who influences or is impacted by a roadmap. The fancy term for these people is stakeholders. Stakeholders not only need to be informed about a roadmap, but should help us create it. People that generally are stakeholders for the team are in the following groups. We have our product manager who's working very closely with the team. We have our engineering and design, the team who's going to implement the plans. We have higher management and executives. And then we have other teams within the company, sales, marketing, customer service. And last but not least, we have internal and external users. Who's going to use our product? We need to make sure we capture that somewhere and include them into the roadmap planning discussions. It is very important we notify people. They're going to have to spend some time with us to let us know what they think and how they think they would benefit from work that we can do. We're making good progress. We know what we're creating and who is involved to help us. But we need ideas. And as we know, there are no silly ideas. We want to hear anything and everything from the most junior person to our most senior person, from marketing to sales, from our product owner to our leadership team. All stakeholders have a say, and this is the time to take advantage of it. To make this happen, what I like to do is get everyone in a quick session where I'll talk through the stage that we're at, that we need ideas to be able to assess, and then that we're going to decide which ones make more sense for us to take on. But I want everyone to be involved in this process and make sure that they get the enough time to be able to share their ideas with us. I tend to have something very simple ready Again, a page where anyone can go and edit so they can add as many ideas as they want and why they'd like us to do this work. There's no need to worry about trying to make sense of or understand all their ideas. Fast forward two weeks, we now have a bunch of ideas and opinions from all different types of people. What now? How do we assess which ones really make sense for us to pick up? How do we prioritize them? And how do we even explain our decisions to people who put time in helping us? So let's take a breath, because just asking these questions gave me some anxiety. This framework is called RISE, an acronym for Reach, Impact, Confidence, and Effort. These different attributes need to be measured and form an overall score as a result. The resulting score measures total impact per time worked, exactly what we'd like to maximize. 
we have reached, how many people will this impact? Impact, how much will this impact each person? Confidence, how confident are you in your estimates? Effort, how many person months will this take to, to achieve? And the overall score is multiplying reach, impact and confidence and dividing all of them by effort. Let me walk through an example using it for two different ideas so we can understand it a bit better. So let's say we have idea number one where we've assessed it's going to have, it's going to reach 100 people. Uh, the impact is going to have is high. We have medium level confidence and the effort is going to take uh, for us to, to achieve it is going to be two person months. So that forms an overall score of 50. Let's say now we have idea number two where it's going to reach Double number, double amount of people. The impact is going to be lower. The impact is going to be low, actually. But we have higher confidence, and the effort to achieve it is going to be one person month. That gives us an overall score of 160. That means it's three times better to work on idea number two than to work on idea number one, which is not exactly obvious if we assess only the impact of the different projects. And this is something I've seen many product managers and engineering managers get wrong. They try to optimize for high impactful projects, but they forget about the different areas that this framework takes into consideration. I would definitely recommend playing around with this framework and see how you can use it in your roadmap planning process. Coming back to the point where we're at, now we can put this framework into practice and assess all of the different ideas that we have to be able and get to this overall score and potentially work with our tech lead and our product manager together to be able and assess these different attributes. Using this framework, you will end up with your priority score and a way to explain them to everyone. I have a free template that you can see in the comments below. It has a segment about the dumping ideas and also using this brace framework. Have a look and see if you can use it in your roadmap planning. Now we have all our ideas prioritized and ready to go. Does this mean that we have our team roadmap ready? Well, not exactly. What we have is what will feed into it and ultimately generate the roadmap. But there's a couple more very important steps that we need to take. First of all, it's going to be pretty obvious that there's way too much in our list of ideas to achieve in a set period of time. So we need to analyze how much work the team can take on and think about known risks as well as unknown risks. We need to make sure we provide enough time per project for people to tackle anything unexpected, as well as normal things like people taking time off, getting ill, etc. Missing this step can actually make or break all of the work that we put in. If we start broadcasting to customers and prospect customers that will deliver project three in June, but in reality, because of the strictness of our timelines and unknown risks, in June, we're still working on project one, we'll have a lot of explaining. So we need to do some calculations. How many people we have in the team? Are there any known plans for extended time off? How much time does each of our top priorities need? Depending on the size of the team, it might make sense to work on some of them in parallel as well. I would also strongly encourage adding at minimum 20% buffer for each project. So there's quite a bit to put together and calculate to make sure that we give enough time for each project for us to work on and to ensure that known and unknown risks are calculated to the best of our knowledge. After these calculations are done, now we should have a roadmap artifact that can be presentable. A tip at this stage is to go through it with your team first, before sharing it with anyone else. You definitely want to get agreement and alignment by your team on what is proposed for them to work on before broadcasting them to the wider organization. There might be concerns to address, which will be easier to do at this stage rather than leaving them for later. I have another free template for you to access in the comments below that outlines a roadmap document and you can fill it in with your content. Now that you have this, you can share all of that with your company or organization. I would recommend being very open and potentially presenting your plans in an all hands or a similar meeting that you have in your company as early as you can so you can get feedback from other people as soon as possible before execution time. It is worth noting that this is not a one-off exercise. I like to go through this process a few times per year, reiterating and reassessing our plans as we go. Maybe there are changes that I didn't anticipate, which demand a change in plans. Remember, roadmaps are not set in stone. They are living documents that evolve with your team and the ever-changing landscape. And there you have it. I appreciate there was a lot of information in this video, so I would encourage you to watch it again or any particular segment you found interesting, if you want to take notes from it. I hope you found these expanded insights helpful and I encourage you to put them into practice. If you have any questions or tips, feel free to leave them in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. And until next time, stay curious, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next one.